Bonjour la famille de Dieu, nous voici encore une fois réunis dans la présence de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ, ensemble dans ce culte de louange, d'adoration. Et ce matin, nous sommes capables de dire Seigneur, prends mon équerre, me les donne-toi tout mon équerre ce matin. Alléluia.
pour célébrer la victoire de Jésus sur la croix, sur la mort. À travers la mort de Jésus, nous dans la vie. Amen. Alléluia. Alléluia.
morning, Church. It is with great joy in my heart that I am bringing you the Word of God this morning. Happy Easter to all of you. For us today, we are celebrating Easter. It is really a feast which has a great significance because Jesus has died and has risen up. In 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Corinth and he's saying that we should get rid of the old yeast so that we are a new paste since we are without yeast. For Christ our pulse of the Lamb has been sacrificed. The Apostle Paul is showing that we should run toward perfection. We should get rid of sin in our life as Christ Jesus made us new creatures. In Christ Jesus, we have been justified and sin has no more power over our lives since we have overcome sin and we can be strong in Jesus Christ because we are no longer living in sin. The yeast in the word of God represents sin, but now that we are no longer living in sin, it's because Jesus Christ is our Passover and he has paid a sacrifice for us on the cross. We all know the sufferings that Jesus has endured for us on the cross so that we can be saved today. The institution of the Passover is found in Exodus 12 verse 1. In Exodus, God gave instructions on how to celebrate the Passover. So first, the Passover represents protection because when the people of Israel took the instructions given by God, so they killed a lamb and they took the blood of that lamb and applied it on the top of their doorsteps, God gave them this instruction to put the blood on top of their doorsteps because the angel of death will pass and he will kill all firstborns in Egypt. But the people of Israel have been saved and have been protected by the blood which was on top of their doorstep. When the angel of death, the destroyer, passed through Egypt, he saw the blood on top of the doorstep and he did not kill any firstborn among the people of Israel. But it was only among the firstborn of the Egyptians who died. So the people of Israel have been protected by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus was shed on the cross so that today we can be protected because the devil is trying to attack us every day and every day he's sending arrows our way. But the word of God is saying that no weapon formed against us shall prevail. The blood of Jesus protects our life. The blood of Jesus protects our family. The blood of Jesus protects our children. It is why we should plead the blood of Jesus over our family, over us each morning, because the blood, the blood will protect us. In Exodus 12 verse 31, it shows us how the Pharaoh, after his firstborn was uh, had died, the Pharaoh has set free the people of Israel. So the Passover also represents freedom because the people of Israel have been freed on that day. They were set free from the slavery of the Egyptians. When Jesus died and rose up, he brought up a freedom for each person who has accepted him as Lord and Savior over our lives. We have accepted Jesus as our Lord, our Savior, our Master. And today we can say that we have been freed from sin. Because on the day that Adam committed sin, on that day, men fell in slavery. But today we have been freed from this. So we have been freed from sin. And sin no longer has power over our life. The Passover represents freedom. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, it is said that it is for freedom that Christ has redeemed us. So let's stand firm in this liberty and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. As Christians, 
we often go back to the law. But we are not living under the law, we are living under grace. We are trying to do things additional in our life. We should live our Christian life totally free. An example is the circumcision in the book of Acts. The disciples were looking to maintain circumcision. The Apostle Paul had been preaching to pagans and these pagans were being saved. So certain disciples were saying that these uh, pagans should be circumcised. They wanted to go back to the law. But uh, they set up a council in Acts 15 and they agreed that we are no longer under the law but under the grace. So we should not go back under the law. We should not go back to certain rights or additional things in our Christian life. This does not mean that we should use this liberty to do what we want. We should stay in this grace. We should not go back to rights and certain laws that were existing in the book of Leviticus because we have been set free in Jesus Christ. In John chapter 8 verse 26 it is says that if the Son has therefore made you free, you shall be free indeed. There is a condition here, if the Son. So has Jesus Christ really set you free? Is Jesus Christ really your Redeemer? The Passover is also a freedom. The Passover is also a power. A power which has been manifested in the spiritual world. A power which has been manifested for the church, for each one of us. This is the day of the resurrection of Jesus. On the day that Jesus was ris risen up, it's a victory that took place. A victory over death, over sin. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57, it says that death has been overthrown by victory. So death has lost its value, its effect. Death, where is your power? Jesus Christ has overcome you. Jesus Christ did not stay in the tomb. He was resurrected on the third day. And on the day that Jesus was resurrected, he brought victory in the life of every Christian. It's true that we die physically, because when sin entered the earth, it brought two types of death. First, the physical death, and then the spiritual death. The physical death is when our body dies. The spiritual death is when we have been separated from God. But when we accept Jesus, spiritual death no longer has power over our life. So even if we die, because uh, on one day we will all die, our body needs to go back to the soul, but death will not be able to take our soul, and our soul will not go to hell, but our soul will go to heaven with Jesus, because we have been justified. This is why in Romans 8, it says, who can accuse those whom God had chosen, because it is God who has who has justified them. The wages of sin has no power over us. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal Christ. So today we are living eternally. Even though we are uh, in this body, we are already living eternally. Because when we die, we will go to live eternally with Jesus Christ. In John chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. So even if our body dies, there have been several people in our church who have died before us, heroes of faith who have died in our church. They're already dead. Their body has already gone back to soil. But when Jesus Christ will come back, these people who have died in Christ will rise up and they will take a supernatural body, an imperishable body. For us who are still living, for Christians who have not yet died, we will be reunited with these people who have gone to heaven before us. So we see that death has no more power because it has been overthrown by victory. And the victory is Jesus Christ and that we will be risen up with Jesus Christ to go with him 
to heaven. More than this, the Passover is also a power. In John 20, verse 11 to 17, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb to prepare the body of Christ. So Jesus appeared to her. She wanted to touch him. We read in John 20, we see that uh, Jesus told her, don't touch me because I still need to ascend to my father. Why did Jesus say this to her? Because Jesus had to present his blood, which was shed on the cross in front of his father. So before his father, he could say, I died and rose again. And with his blood, everyone who has accepted me as Lord and Savior will have access. So he gave back authority to the church. It is a wonderful power. When God created Adam and Eve, he created them with authority to rule on the earth. But when men sinned, he lost that authority. He lost that power. He lost that strength. But when Jesus presented himself before his father and presented his blood before his father, so he said, here, father, now I give back to the church this authority, meaning that all those who accept me as Lord and Savior will have the authority in the spiritual world and we got back this power. So this is why he says, I take back the keys of the kingdom and I give this power to the church. And for Peter, he says, on this rock, I will build my church. So today, the church has a power, has an authority. And when the church bends down its knees and pray and remains in unity, it has the authority to conquer and overcome the power of the devil. In Mark 16, verse 16, it says to go in all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. It also says that in my name, you will cast away demons. So this is a power that we have been given as a church through the power of the Passover. Today, as a church, we can drive away a demon. By our own strength, we will not be able to do it. If I go in my own name and drive away a demon, it's not possible. It's only in the name of Jesus that I can do it. But if I go in my own name, the demon will never go. It will actually laugh at me. But today, in the name of Jesus, we can cast away demons. He also says that we will place our hands on sick people and they will be healed. He says that we will be speaking in new tongues. He says that we can walk on snakes, which is walking on the power of the evil. So this is why we do not have to fear. What, we do not have to fear what is happening in the world because we have the authority and we need to use that authority as a church. So this is the power that Jesus gave to the church through the Passover. So to finish, the crossover also represents peace in our heart. Does the world have peace? No. The world is troubled these days. The world is in a difficult situation. The world is living in fear. But Jesus Christ, in the same chapter, in John chapter 20, verse 19, the second part, Jesus is saying, May peace be with you, which means shalom. And this peace that us as Christians we have in our heart, although the world is troubled, all the world is living in fear. I believe that in our life and in the life of each Christian today, we have peace in our heart. So if the world falls down tomorrow, we still have, we will still have peace in our heart because it is not the world who, who gave it to us. It is God who gave us peace. And Jesus says, I leave to you my peace. I give you my peace. And to finish, the Passover also represents the living 
faith. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 17, it says, If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. So if Jesus Christ was, has not risen up and that did not come out of the tomb, today the faith that we have would have been dead and futile. Long ago, it used to be a futile faith because we were believing in a God which was dead. But today our faith is alive, our faith is strong because we believe in a in a savior who is alive he is alive he's alive in our heart he's alive in each christian family so let's live our faith a living faith in christ jesus when i say something is alive i also mean that um, it is moving it is something which is active which has movement so let's have so may our faith ha be active and have movement May our faith move mountains, because our faith is not dead. Our faith is based on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So for us, the force of earth represents power. So let's leave it. And every day let's ask the Lord that our faith remains alive in Him. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for your word, which is the truth. Because, Lord, for the Passover, you are our Passover lamb. You have set us free. You have protected us. You are always there, and you will give us the power for Passover. I thank you, Lord, for this. May this word be written in our heart, so that we can continue to meditate on it. In the name of Jesus. I want to praise you and I want to say thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So to finish, I want to leave a song on your heart. I want to leave your freedom. Je tressaille déjà, mon âme tremble de joie, et je pleure et je ris, je suis ivre de toi, car je vis ta liberté, car je vis ta
going to celebrate the Holy Communion. The Holy Communion was instituted by Jesus Christ when he was celebrating the Passover, the last feast with his disciples. This is why we should take the, past, the Holy Communion very seriously. As we are remembering the death of Jesus and the new covenant that we have with Jesus Christ. So let's thank the Lord for his blood and for his body. Lord, we want to thank you for your body, for your blood which was shed for us on the cross, because through your body we have life and life in abundance. I want to thank you, Lord, for this, because Jesus, you have instituted the Holy Communion, and you want us to remember that your body was crushed on the cross for us and your blood and your blood was shed for us so that today we have abundant life so let's eat together the body of christ and let's and let's drink together the blood of christ thank you lord for your blood which was shed for us on the cross and for your and through your blood we have abundant life Thank you, Lord, that we have been celebrating the Holy Communion because you are our Passover. And we thank you, Lord, for this. May your name be blessed and be glorified in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless you and have a very good week. Goodbye. Wow, what a message on this Easter day. I hope that you have been blessed as much as I have been. I hope that you have been encouraged in your faith as much as I have been encouraged. God's protection against all plagues, the freedom from the bondage of sin, from our vices and passions, the power of God, and the guarantee of victory through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Moreover, God has stripped Satan and his demons, and God has given authority to his church. And now, the church has power over Satan and all his demons. We have the assurance to have a Jesus who lives, sitting at the right hand of God. We have peace and our faith is a living one. We can face this world and just like this song says, because he lives, I do not have to fear anything. On the contrary, we can move forward in this world. I have the impression that lately through the different sermons these last three or four Sundays there is a common thread whereby God is showing us that we should not fear and that we need to move forward even though we are still in lockdown we need to reach out to those people who are in need and we can be happy in these situations. And today, we should not forget that God has given us authority on the works of evil and we have a guaranteed victory. 
I hope that during this forthcoming week, we can leave this victory that has been obtained on the cross of Golgotha and above all, through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. May God bless you. During this week, as you all know, we won't still be able to meet at the church. We will continue our online meetings. Hence, we will continue our prayer groups on Tuesday. If there are some people who don't form part of our prayer groups but would like to join them, I would request you to get in touch with us and we can add you to a prayer group. Our prayer meeting will still be carried out through our Zoom on Thursday at 5.30 p.m. And those who have not yet joined us on Thursdays, I would encourage you to do so, so that we may pray together. Of course, next Sunday at 9 a.m., we will meet for our service on YouTube. We will continue online until the authorities give us the permission to meet at church. As regards the tithes for this end of March, there will be the account number of the Assembly of God that will be displayed at the bottom of the screen. And those of you who have the facilities, you can give your tithes on the AOG Bearers account, either through Juice or Mighty Money or Internet Banking, so that the church can still function. As you know, soon we will set up the elevator, so this will help. We can place this coming week before God. We ask God to guide us. May we be empowered by the resurrection of Christ, and may we live this week victoriously. Let us together give thanks to God, and let us place this week before Him. Lord our God, we bless you. Yes, Lord, you live. And because you live, we can face tomorrow. Because you live, we have the courage. Because you live, we can be victorious. You give us strength. You have given us the Holy Spirit. You have empowered us so that we can be victorious over Satan and all his works of evil. We are victorious over sin, over evil. Thank you, Lord, for accompanying each one of us this week. And may we all live this week by the power of resurrection. In the name of Jesus, amen. Have a good week ahead and God bless you.